They did the triple stack! Everybody, I just got done watching the live stream of the brand new PlayStation console announcements and today I'm going to be giving my thoughts about what they showed and uh, the cool stuff that they talked about and also the nice features that you're going to be getting with the PlayStation 4 Pro as it's called. This was previously known as the Neo or the PlayStation 4K. It is now officially called the PlayStation 4 Pro. All right, kind of like the PlayStation 4K a um, bit better, but there's a reason that it's not called that. In fact, this console is really, sure, it's geared towards 4K and HDR gaming, but it's also got benefits to just the common gamer who has a standard 1080p HDTV, and we're going to talk about all that cool stuff in a bit. So to start it off with the PlayStation meeting they called the PlayStation meeting 2016 uh, they immediately started uh, talking about what their plans were and why they were doing this and kind of just setting up the foreground they right off the bat immediately announced a PlayStation 4 Slim all right this has been leaked over the past a couple weeks now no one was really surprised to see it it was the exact same model that we saw the unboxings for and so this was to be expected that they're going to announce it is now going to be replacing the standard PlayStation 4 that you are seeing uh, just on the store shelves today and it also got a slight price uh, decrease down to $300. So that's a nice price decrease. The con this generation, consoles have just dro dropped in price so dramatically. If you remember last generation, it wasn't anywhere near that. Like last generation, it took a while for the consoles to kind of drop in price and they're still pretty expensive. But I mean, here we are like three years into this generation and the prices of the consoles have just dropped dramatically. I mean, it's $250 for an Xbox One standard console. I mean, that's just so cheap. And now it's $300 for a PlayStation 4 Slim, and you still get the 4K um, streaming services and whatnot and things like that. So it's actually pretty, pretty cool. So in addition to that, they kind of talked a little bit about it after saying, okay, this is gonna replace the PlayStation 4 console that you see right now um, that everyone kind of owns. And uh, going into that, they kind of led into the PlayStation 4 Pro announcement. Now they said right at the bat that this was not gonna be replacing uh, this is not meant to replace any of the consoles. This is not meant to be like a new console generation. This was just meant as sort of just a step up, a boost in power for people who are hardcore gamers or just want something more out of the console experience. They didn't, they didn't market it as, well, this is an entry level into the next generation of gaming. They made it very clear that, hey, we just want it to stick to this generation. We just want to upgrade the power on what we're able to do with this generation. And to be honest, uh, 4K and HDR is at the forefront of this console, but really this is sort of, I, I find these new console announcements sort of like uh, Sony and Microsoft correcting their mistakes with this generation, because when the consoles launched, they were very underpowered, and not to mention that um, they didn't support 4K in any capacity whatsoever, and 4K was already a pretty decent thing in 2013, it's not anything that just broke out, I mean it was, it was still available, and pretty much cheaply so. And when the PlayStation 3 came out, 1080p was like just coming into the mainstream and they supported it with that console. So it's a bit surprising, you know, I always said it was a bit surprising that these consoles didn't support 4K right out of the gate. It's just weird. Uh, but now they actually do with these new Slim and PlayStation 4 Pro consoles, 4K is at the forefront of what your experience is. So they talked about the GPU first, that it's going to have double the capabilities of the standard PlayStation 4. I think in some cases over double the capabilities of the standard PlayStation 4 model. Now they're taking advantage of AMD's new architecture, Polaris, so that's actually pretty good. That means that it's every it's going to be less efficient, it's probably going to draw less power and you're going to get a lot more performance out of it. So double the GPU horsepower is pretty good. A lot of people compared the PlayStation 4 to having a graphics card processor unit um, around the R9270 uh, from AMD so this is probably gonna be a nice upgrade and uh, should be able to pull out some of these modern games at better graphics and more importantly better frame rates and more consistent frame rates than what we're seeing with the base PlayStation 4 right now so Polaris is actually pretty exciting um, for those of you guys who are not PC gamers you just don't know what this is every single part it, 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 uh, graphics architecture is sort of like a new generation, but just for graphics cards, really. So NVIDIA just recently released their uh, Pascal architecture, and uh, that was the successor to Maxwell. And so they released their GTX 1000, 10 series, excuse me. Um, 
right, uh, you know, right alongside their Pascal architecture movement, and it's helped out a lot, of, a lot, a lot in terms of like uh, efficiency. And uh, there's a lot less power that the card needs to draw in order to to actually put out a lot more better performance. So it's pretty useful. So AMD's uh, new Polaris architecture actually just released recently, and uh, now we're seeing that benefit kind of pour over to consoles, which is just fantastic. It's exciting because that means that hey, the consoles are going to be a lot more efficient. They're probably going to be quieter, not going to run as hot, and we're going to get better graphics and performance. Uh, just out of the gate with that new architecture. So that's really really exciting. All right So in addition to that they also up the clock speed of this of the CPU This was um, CPU is probably the biggest bottleneck that these consoles have and a lot of games that rely on the CPU for com um, computational um, situations games like Fallout 4 um, Mirror Zeds in some cases uh, those it, I think we're gonna see a lot of big benefits coming in as as Far as those games go, those big open world games, and also Just Cause 3 is one that just performs terribly on uh, on the consoles with frame rate drops to like 20, even in the teens, the frame rates, that's uh, a big CPU bottleneck for the console, and so I'm really interested to see how those games take advantage of the extra clock speed, because if we can get more power out of the CPU, we can probably get more consistent frame rates, less bottlenecks, and you just really want to make it a very... Um, consistent really good experience so that's really awesome to see i'm really excited about that in addition they also upgraded the hard drive it's going to have a one terabyte hard drive now which i'm a bit disappointed to be honest because i think there should honestly be a two terabyte model they didn't announce a two terabyte model they just said oh it's going to have a one terabyte hard drive and i'm sorry but even one terabyte is not enough this generation i put a two terabyte hard drive in my ps4 and with all the games you guys see uh, that i have and unboxed including all the digital indie games that i've downloaded i still have around 700 gigs left six seven hundred gigs left and so i'm running out of space now you might say to yourself well cameron can't you just take the hard drive out of your ps4 right now and put it into the new one yes however there's a slight catch Whenever you install a new hard drive onto your PlayStation 4, the PlayStation 4 has to format the hard disk. And it's the same thing for the Xbox One. Whenever you plug in an external hard drive, it has to format the hard disk. That being said, uh, there's some games on there that I have on my PS4 that I just don't want to get rid of. Most notably, PT. If you guys remember PT, that, that survival horror game, uh, Silent Hills, everyone knows PT. But uh, if I move my hard drive over from my PlayStation 4 right now to the new PlayStation 4 Pro, I will lose PT, and you can't re-download it. You cannot get it every anywhere at all. So it's like I have to contemplate, well, I can either have PT installed on my hard drive, which is arguably one of the best horror demos experiences that you'll find ever in the history of this entertainment medium, and do I really want to get rid of it? You know, I have friends that kind of have it on their system, so I wouldn't be completely inept from playing it. And to be honest, I haven't gone back to the game since I played it when it first came out. But it's still pretty cool to have a game like that installed on my hard drive. And I really just don't want to get rid of it, even if it comes with a bigger hard drive. So what I'm thinking about doing is saying, you know what? I'll keep, I'll, I'll just keep the hard drive in my PS4, my current PS4. I'll keep the two terabyte in there and I'll just buy another one because they're only, they're cheap. They're like a hundred bucks for a two terabyte hard drive. Um, and they're even get much more expensive when you talk about SSDs. I would love the I would love to spend I would love to be able to spend like six seven hundred dollars on a two terabyte SSD and just plop it in there. And so I'd have an SSD on the PlayStation 4 Ni uh, Pro, excuse me, and it would really be beneficial. But we'll see. Um, I probably will be have to get another two terabyte hard drive because I'm sorry, just one terabyte is is not enough. This is not enough space for someone like me who plays a lot of games and uh, gets a lot of games for these consoles and stuff. And yeah, even though I'm not so into the consoles as I was before, now I play on my PC mostly, I still need that extra hard drive space just for the efficiency and just to not worry about anything uh, in the future of me getting which games. So that is something that um, I will probably need to pick up. In addition, they also talked about the PlayStation VR support. Uh, the PlayStation VR is coming out next month. It's coming out in October and it's gonna run you $400. So, um, that being said, they, they talked about how the new PlayStation 4 Pro is going to be able to render the VR experiences at higher fidelity, so you're going to get better graphics within the VR um, experience, and also better pick, uh, better uh, resolution within those experiences as well. So it's just going to look a lot sharper, it's probably going to be a lot more vivid and just a lot better and more consistent with higher frame rates and stuff. Um, than what you'd be normally getting with um, just a regular PlayStation 4. Now it's 
do it is important for me to mention that even though i'm talking about all these upgrades we're not getting rid of the baseline ps4 they're just it's just simply an upgradable option and i'm going to talk about one cool thing um in in just a little bit here because they actually made the playstation 4 pro uh accessible to everyone even if you don't have a 4k tv even if you don't have an hdr compatible um set you can still see the benefits of the playstation 4 pro and that is what's really really important here all right so let's talk about the negative things uh, that are just unfortunately not included in this new system and then we'll go into the, to the, to the other cool stuff that they announced as well, alright? So it's been confirmed unfortunately that the new PlayStation 4 Pro will not have a 4K Blu-ray player. Very interesting choice. Um, this could have been a real deal breaker for a lot of people I think, but not including a 4K Blu-ray player has allowed the price of the PlayStation 4 to drop down dramatically. Because thinking, considering uh, considering this, that if it did have a 4K Blu-ray player, you probably would have seen like a $50 to $100 price increase than what they announced. And the price of the PlayStation 4 Neo is extremely enticing. It's 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 something that you honestly wouldn't think that they would launch it for. I, I was I was expecting something much higher than what they announced, and I'll tell you guys the price later. But just it, it, I mean, it's absolutely crazy. It does not have a 4K Blu-ray player, which to me doesn't really matter. I don't watch movies in my bedroom. Um, when I do watch movies, it's in the living room. And uh, it's on a surround sound, a Bose surround sound setup. And there's a 1080p uh, TV in the living room that I would really like to get my parents to upgrade to a 4K TV. Because only then I would really see the benefits and really want to get 4K Blu-ray movies as a total. It's still actually useful to get 4K Blu-ray movies if you don't have a 4K TV. Because 4K Blu-rays, come with the standard Blu-ray and the digital copy. So you should already you should already probably just buy 4K um, Blu-rays even if you don't have a 4K Blu-ray player because you get the standard Blu-ray as well on top of that. And when you do get a 4K TV, when you do upgrade, you will still have your 4K Blu-rays that you'll be able to use and uh, you won't have to rebuy those again in the higher resolution and come out with all these copies of the film. So it is interesting that they did not include that, but I understand and to be honest, to me, it's not a deal breaker just because I don't use my PS4 as like the center of all my entertainment, you know? I got a computer hooked up to it. If I want to go on YouTube, if I want to stream video, I'll use my computer. I won't use my consoles. I, I only use my consoles exclusively for gaming, really. So it's, it's no big deal to me. But that is something that I do want to put out there because it could be notable to a lot of people out there saying, you know what, I was looking for really a platform that does it all. And to be honest, the PlayStation 4 Pro does a lot, but just doesn't do it all. All right, so 4K Blu-rays are out, unfortunately. But um, with that, you do get a nice price um, that that comes with the console, and uh, that is kind of notable. You know, it's it's pretty cool to have. So they showed a couple games off after that, and uh, they're basically talking about how HDR gaming is really just going to bring to life the scene. And they showed uh, Horizon Zero Dawn, which to be honest, I'm looking at this game on my phone, right, and I'm already seeing, I'm already looking at the game on my phone. It doesn't, it, obviously my phone doesn't have HDR or anything like that, it's just, an, it's a really nice OLED screen. I'm watching this, I'm thinking, my god, that, I mean, just by itself, Horizon looks beautiful, but imagining that in HDR is just... It's unparalleled. It's almost crazy to think how that game would look in HDR if it looks that good at standard conventional TV sets. So um, it's just absolutely crazy, and I'm really, really excited. I, God, I, I wish I had the, the room, and I wish I had the money to buy that LG TV that uh, Jake and I saw at CES. It's the best TV on the market you can get. It's OLED plus HDR, 4K with a glass panel, and $6,000. It's the best TV on the market. I really would love to play on that sometime, but maybe maybe in the future. <laughs> That's a really nice TV, I'm telling you that. But uh, just just looking at the games, it's 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 really awesome to see how how good they look just on a standard set. Obviously, they can't show you HDR through streamed video. They can only I mean they had at one point an HDR TV set up, and Mark Stoney was saying, okay, well here's here's standard conventional. Uh, dynamic range, standard standard range, and then they, they they switched to high dynamic range, and you just saw the colors shift and also the image shift. It, it was an unparalleled difference in just image quality, clarity, and beauty overall. It was it was incredibly immaculate. So um, really looking forward to seeing just the benefits of that, and I really hope that um, it's really cool that they're bringing that sort of benefit and that look and style over to the gaming space. 
So they showed Horizon Zero Dawn, they showed a Call of Duty Infinite Warfare, which to be honest actually looked pretty good, like the graphics in it looked really, really good. And then they also showed um, Mass Effect Andromeda for the first time, I completely forgot. Mass Effect Andromeda, we saw gameplay for the first time, or true true live gameplay of the game for the first time. It looks really good, like, it, it looks like your standard Mass Effect game. Um, there's a little bit more platforming involved and there's a little bit more environmental um, action. But now that it's made with the Frostbite engine, the graphics just were so much better. And uh, really looking forward to playing that game. They, they said it's going to be really, taking really good advantage of the PlayStation 4 Pro, and that's just really awesome to see. So really excited for Mass Effect Andromeda, which is coming out next year. I think it's going to be a really good one, and uh, looking, looking forward to it. it. It should be pretty nice on the PlayStation 4 Pro. So now I want to talk about the benefits that everyone's going to be getting with the PlayStation 4 Pro. Now, if you don't have a 4K TV, you can still get the PlayStation 4 Pro and get uh, benefits from it. And this is a huge deal breaker for someone like me because you might be saying, oh, okay, I don't have a 4K TV. I can't see myself really investing in a 4K TV, let alone a 4K TV with HDR uh, capabilities. Um, I'm not going to get. I'm not going to get the PlayStation 4 Pro. There's no point. Well. Guess what? You're wrong. There is a point of getting this new console. Uh, they showed existing games that have been already upgraded or will be updated to support the PlayStation 4 Day 1. So they showed uh, Middle Earth Shadow Mordor. That was one of the games that they showed. They said that they upgraded the graphics slightly and that the game has super sampled anti-aliasing. So you're actually getting much higher resolution graphics that you're gonna see on a 1080p TV. So you're getting zero, super sampled anti-aliasing, by the way, just means that the game's being rendered at a much higher resolution and then being down sampled to, to the standard 1080p TVs. So it's amazing that you're gonna get that clear. You're gonna get that clarity with an existing game, especially, you know, Shadow of Mordor's, because that's been out for, what, two years now? So you're gonna see benefits from that game and they're still patching it and updating it, and that's that's just really great to see. So you're gonna get super sampled anti-aliasing and better graphics with Middle Earth Shadow of Mordor. In addition with that, um, for Infamous First Light, it's gonna be upgraded to HDR, and you're also gonna have better particle effects, so that's actually pretty good to see. For Ubisoft's upcoming game for Honor, you're actually gonna get higher resolution textures and better fidelity. They, they actually showed, here's For Honor running on a 4K TV with HDR, it looks good. Then they showed, here's here's it running on the PlayStation 4, uh, PlayStation Pro, excuse me, on a, just a 1080p TV. And they showed, they showed just much more better textures and also a lot more, uh, environmental quality like more grass and just more more you know environmental decals and, and just stuff like that so that's actually really cool to see again someone like like me is is really gonna be uh excited to see this because i play on my computer monitor this is 3440 by 1440 all right it is 40 percent less pixels than 4k it's close but it's 40 percent less pixels than 4k it does Unfortunately, 1440p, which is 2560 by 1440, is not recognized as a standard output unless you're playing on a PC. Like, like no, I, I doubt like you're gonna go into the PlayStation 4 Pro settings and you're gonna be able to select 1440p as an option because most you know TV sets aren't gonna support the 1440p, even though it's a 16 by 9 and it's pretty standard among PCs. Uh, I doubt most TV sets are gonna actually say, oh, that's actually a resolution that we can run natively and upscale it. So. I doubt that's going to be an option, but maybe it will be, I don't know. But even even if I'm playing at 1080p here, you're going to get better graphics as a result. You'll actually be getting better graphics than you would at 4K at 4K sets, and you're still going to see some benefit in some way. So, I mean, somehow Sony has made it uh, Sony has made it enticing to get the PlayStation 4 Pro even if you don't have a 4K TV, and that's just fantastic because Again, it's like someone like me, I play on this computer monitor, it doesn't have 4K. It's close, but it's not there. And uh, the PlayStation 4 is probably gonna recognize the 1080p only output on it, but it's still okay. It's still fine because um, I'm gonna get better graphics as a result. I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get more high resolution textures. Um, I'm gonna get uh, maybe more particles and more effects on screen, better depth of field, better anti-aliasing like I mentioned. Uh, maybe I'll get, maybe in some some cases you can get better frame rates. What if you had a choice between playing a game on the PlayStation 4 Pro at 1080p 60 versus 4K 30? You know, it's, it's stuff like that. I really like that option because sure, it's bringing it more in line with what you're gonna be getting with PC gaming because that's exactly what PC gaming is. The higher you go up in resolution, 
resolution, sometimes you're gonna have to make compromises um, depending on your graphics card of what graphics settings that you're gonna have to run. And so uh, unfortunately, you know, when it comes to that, uh, you'll have to you'll 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 have to pick and choose. Sometimes your card can run 1080p ultra settings, zero problem. Sometimes it can run 4K medium high settings um, and still have a good frame rate. And you have that option here with the Neo. You can hook it up to a standard TV and still see more benefits, in some cases, better graphical pres presentation than what you're gonna be getting on 4K sets. That option makes it not only enticing to just someone who doesn't wanna upgrade to 4K for whatever reason, but to everyone. It makes 4K, it makes the PlayStation 4 Pro, excuse me, an option for everyone. And that's so, it's ingenious and it's exciting. Again, I have a reason to upgrade. I'm not just, it's like, for me, it's like, I'm not just gonna get the console just to say, oh, well, it does play 4K. I don't have a 4K TV, but it can play 4K. But now I can actually see the benefits of playing like on a 1080p TV saying, wow, I'm actually getting better graphics than I thought. Like, what if they upgrade Uncharted 4 to 60 frames per second? Maybe they include the, sh maybe they, they upgrade the graphics of Uncharted 4 at 1080p where you get better shadows, um, better lighting, better draw distance. Um, and then at 4K, you get the same graphics as you normally would have gotten on the uh, uh, PlayStation 4 standard console. So that is just really exciting. It's it's exciting as an option to have to have that and just to be able to say, you know what, I can get the PlayStation 4 Pro. I don't have a 4K TV, but I can still get some benefit out of that. That is amazing, and I'm really happy that they showed it. Again, they showed existing games too. Like they call it forward compatibility, which is actually kind of cool because. They showed existing games, like I said, Infamous First Lights, uh, Days X Human Revol uh, Mankind Divide, excuse me, um, which just released. They said that it's going to have better graphics um, on the 4K Neo. It's it's the 4K Neo. It's going to have better graphics, and it's also um, I think it, they said it's going to run better. It might just be consistent 30 frames. They actually might upgrade it to 60 or unlocked frame rate. But they said it's going to have much better graphics regardless. I'm curious if on a 1080p TV, if you're going to see some benefits to those games as well. So it's interesting, um, it really is. For me personally, I, I, I really wish that I had the room to get a 4K TV. I know a lot of people say, well, you can take this down, you can just bolt it on the wall, but that doesn't, it, it, there's no balance here. You know, it's like you want something with balance. I just don't wanna have all this screen set up like in my bedroom, I want balance. I wanna be able to sit here and say, well, this isn't over the top where, where I have a big 50 inch TV bolted here on the wall. Um, it's it's just it's not it's not nice. It's you want to balance it, uh, with everything. You know you don't want it to be over the top insane and just saying, well, I, have a, I want a 4K HDR TV. Here's the room. I'm just gonna plop it there. So I, it's like I'm not gonna do that. So I'm kind of curious as to like saying, okay, what what can I really do? You know, I have uh, this this room isn't that small. I really want a 4K uh, HDR TV just to see those benefits. And for, unfortunately, HDR hasn't really taken over to monitor technology. I believe Dell makes an HDR monitor, but it's like two or three thousand dollars. It's more expensive than this thing, and this thing's really good, right? So it's it's really it's it's just really interesting to see how that goes. Maybe in the future, in the next year or two, we'll start getting HDR monitors. Because I really think HDR is going to start taking over the, the mainstream. And to be honest, HDR is really, I think, is what's going to sell 4K. It's, it's going to be fantastic. So we're going to have to wait and see um, what happens. Uh, Jacob has a 4K TV. It just isn't HDR. So there are, maybe there are times where I can just bring the PlayStation 4 Pro over to his house and see the benefits in real time and everything like that. And that'd be kind of cool. But again, it's not HDR. And HDR is really... It's really amazing. If you have not seen HDR in person, um, it's it's just out of this world. To be, it's not all fluff. You might be saying, "Oh, it's all corporate fluff." HDR, it probably it isn't that big of a difference. It can't be that big of a difference, but it really is. HDR is the equivalent of going from 720 to 1080p TV. It's pretty dramatic. You know, it, it really is. And uh, I would even say going from standard definition to high to full high definition. It truly is dramatic and you need to see it for yourself the stuff that i saw at ces were some of the most incredible imagery like i, I i've ever seen in my whole life honestly and uh i can't wait to go hopefully i'll go again this year to ces and see what else that they have available it should be pretty awesome so the deal breaker for me is this the playstation 4 pro is 400 dollars. that's right it's the launch price of the basic playstation 4. I was expecting 500. I was expecting 600, possibly. 400 dollars, which is 
nothing, considering that that's what you played for the base PlayStation 4. You're getting superior graphics, a much more efficient console, and it's just you're getting benefits no matter what TV set you're playing on. Like, it's a win-win situation. Couple that with some of the best exclusives in the industry, some of the best games in the entertainment medium. Like, what is there, what is your excuse to not get one already? It, it's just absolutely crazy. I mean, I was gonna get the Xbox One S because I wanted a 4K um, Blu-ray player and I wanted to see those HDR benefits, but I'm like, $400 for the Xbox One S 2 terabyte or $400 for the PlayStation 4 Pro with a one terabyte hard drive and you actually get much more power. Instead of the Xbox One S being literally the same console, it's, it's for the most part, you get much more power with the PlayStation 4 Pro. It's the most powerful console of the day. Now next year, Microsoft is gonna be coming out with the Scorpio and that's probably gonna destroy the PlayStation 4 Pro. They have a whole year of, of console power to put that out, but I mean, that's, that's a whole nother year and you can still wait out for that and you can still, you still have a lot of time to buy the PlayStation 4 Pro now, wait for the Scorpio and then get that in the future. So it's not like they're coming out in the same time, but I gotta say, I was really impressed with what I saw. Um, I liked the games that they showed. I thought it looked fantastic. I love the fact that you'll be seeing graphical benefits if you're playing on whatever TV that you want. I mean, again, better graphics on a 1080p TV sharper imagery on a 4k tv uh it, it just depends on what developers want to do and especially for these games that come out on consoles and they're really lackluster experiences like mirror's edge catalyst was terrible on consoles it was absolutely terrible i feel sorry for any of you guys who had to play it on a ps4 or xbox one like you honestly don't know what you were missing it was it was absolutely terrible on those consoles Con pop in everywhere inconsistent frame rate like i look at games like that and i say to myself Damn, if that's running on a PlayStation 4 Pro, that's gonna be incredible just to see the benefit, especially with an HDR game that's colorful like that. Like that's where it's gonna be. It's it's a it's a must-have upgrade if you care about games in general. It's just it's it's out of this world. It's it's it's, it's no there's no way you can deny how useful this upgrade would be. Again, even if you don't own a 4K TV. So those are my thoughts. I already pre-ordered the Neo, by the way. It's already pre-ordered on Amazon. So I'm gonna be getting it day one. Um I probably won't be picking up the Xbox One S now. There's really no point in me picking it up. It's the same price. The two terabyte model is the same price. I know some people say, well, don't get the two terabyte model, but I'm a, can you, do you, do you realize how many games I buy a year? Like you need two terabytes. A terabyte, I'm not even, uh, on the PlayStation 4 Pro, a terabyte is not enough. I'm sorry. It should have been two terabytes. You at least should have another model that has a two terabyte hard drive. Um, but you can upgrade it yourself for, I think it's like $80 for an additional hard drive. So a two terabyte hard drive and uh, probably gonna do that. I'm probably gonna upgrade the speed of the hard drive and um, the size. I wish I had enough money to, to get an SSD, a two terabyte SSDs, but those are just, those are insane. Like who's gonna spend $700 on an SSD, two terabytes, you know, it's, no, you're not gonna do that. But all right, I just wanna talk about my feelings regarding that. Let me, let me know what you guys think. Did you like what you saw? Are you gonna be getting the PlayStation 4 Pro? I know some people have mixed feelings about this whole upgradable console generation where, oh, I gotta buy a new console now, but no one's being left behind here. And to be honest, um, if you just care about games and gentlemen, if you just care about your gaming experience, then, then this is useful. If you're someone who's just like, oh, I just play games for fun, it doesn't really matter, then it's probably not even gonna matter to you. And you'll still be able to get your PlayStation 4 games just as you normally would. It's just for those of us who care about graphical fidelity, for those of us who want the best experience possible, this is a noteworthy upgrade. And it's fantastic to be able to see, again, the benefits no matter what TV set you're playing on. That's just ingenious to me. I did not expect that, by the way. So, all right. PlayStation 4 Pro is pre-ordered. I will unbox it when it comes out on November 10th, I believe is the release date. Um, I'm super excited to play it. I'm still getting a PlayStation VR. I'm still getting it. It's already been pre-ordered again and uh, looking forward to that. And it's gonna be crazy in my bedroom. <sighs> Shit, I'm gonna have to find somewhere to put all this stuff. <laughs> all right, let me know what you guys think. I'm really curious to find out and I will talk with you all later. Have a good one. Also, there's one more quick thing I forgot about. This is not native 4K, all right? I, I think anyone who knows about tech, um, there's no possible way that you can get native 4K. It's, it's way too graphically, even today, it's way too graphically intensive. What we're basically getting is upscaled, upscale, it's like upscaled 4K, but it's with the, uh, it's like with a pixel doubling technique or something weird like that with uh, some form of like temporal anti-aliasing that they're able to push 
like like the imagery to look a lot sharper than it normally looks. Um, so I think they might even use a sharpen filter on top of that to really deliver some really high quality stuff. But it's not native 4K at all. It's 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 close, but it's nowhere near that. So just wanted to clarify that because uh, some people might say, well, it's not 4K. I know, I know, I know. All right, <laughs> it's 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 upscaled content, but still, it's a much sharper presentation. It's not standard. It's not like it's being natively upscaled from a standard resolution. There's some weird technique going on with it, temporal solution, and uh, some pixel doubling and things like that. So I just wanted to clarify.